Margaret and Melanine. Welcome to another edition of Middle Earth Rangers Superpowers. Today we're going to be looking at human echolocation. So stay tuned. I have to say the inspiration for this entire series came from a television series on American TV uh, hosted by Stan Lee, famous comic uh, uh, inventor of the creator of Spider-Man and the Hulk and other characters. Um, his show was called Stan Lee's Superhumans. I think it was on History TV. Um, in the show he featured different uh, individuals who had super unusual abilities and talents, uh, so much so they seemed almost superhuman. I think one of the, uh, one of the uh, benefits of this program was it showed people who were like us who were unusual or didn't quite fit in, that we are actually special and we needed to celebrate our uh, uniqueness. But also, it, uh, it highlighted uh, certain aspects of humanity that have, we have abilities uh, beyond anything we previously imagined. Um, we have untapped potential. So when an episode started with a young man riding his bicycle around on a suburban street. This didn't seem too remarkable until they revealed that he had lost both of his eyes uh, at birth. He was using human echolocation, and as the show went on, you could hear him going click, click, click with his mouth. And he was able to determine the location of things around him. Now, echolocation is not unknown in the animal kingdom. Uh, some bats and many whales and other animals too use uh, the sound waves bouncing off objects to determine the location, whether they're prey items or uh, the interior of a cave or the bottom of the ocean, something like that. So in the brain, there's what's called the visual cortex. And I'm not exactly sure where it's located. Um, and in sighted people, this is used for processing visual information. In a blind person, this can actually be repurposed to process uh, new information. In the case of a human echolocator who is blind, they can reuse that part of their brain for something else. Uh, that's not saying that sighted people can't use human echolocation. Um, a blind person has a little bit of an advantage because they don't have a choice. Uh, they learn ec human lo echolocation or something else, or they don't learn anything at all. Braille, for instance. Um, a sighted person has a choice. They can always open their eyes and use their eyes in a normal manner. So they're not as motivated strongly to use uh, human e echolocation. By the way, all of this is supported by scientific documentation and experimentation. And I'll provide as many links as I can to the documentation uh, in the comments below. So what you'll hear uh, one of these blind individuals doing as they're performing echolocation is they're making a sound with their mouth. It's barely perceptible to the outside world. In fact, in a uh, Middle Earth Ranger um, uh, situation, uh, if you're creeping around the woods, Mirkwood, or wherever, trying to become be unseen, undetected, and it's pitch black, you've got to find your way around some way, or you're stuck inside a cave and trying to find your way out. Merely making a sound like is not going to really attract attention. It sounds like an insect clicking or some sort of bird or whatever. Um, there's a little bit of camouflage involved. Um, However, we're going to go and do some, uh, a few drills that I think will uh, wake up your mind to 
the potential for these, uh, this, this sort of uh, new sensory experience. Yeah, first of all, I want to say that we're accustomed to um, using our eyes to see things around us, and we're accustomed to using our ears to hear people speaking to us and maybe to listen to music. And uh, many times we don't um, have a habit of going beyond that, using our ears for other things. Um, so we're going to break, um, break through that with a little bit of consciousness raising, um, awareness enhancing, or whatever you care to call it. Here's a real simple drill. You can do at home, you can hear, perhaps you'll be able to hear the effect that I'm doing here, uh, but it's actually a lot more effective if you do it yourself. I've got this little notebook, I'm going to hold it in front of my face and move it back like this. And if I'm making a high, high frequency white noise sort of sound like shh, listen to this. Shh. Now I'm making the same sound, but I'm noticing the timbre, the, uh, the frequency dominance of the white noise changes as the sound presser, pressure increases. And even, well, I can do this with my hand. If I'm really tuned in and my eyes are closed or open, I can notice how the sound on that side changes. Now we have ambient sound everywhere. Right now, you might be in your house, there's a refrigerator running its compressor, maybe there's some birds chirping outdoors, uh, crickets, traffic noise, whatever. Right now, if you have a few birds chirping, a distant jet flying overhead, there's always something. Almost always. <laughs> if you're in a deep, deep cave and there's nothing down there, it's just you. Uh, in this case, there's always something buzzing or chirping or humming. And your perception of that changes as things become near to you. Okay, now here's one drill, uh, the second drill, I guess. I'm going to go like this. Just close your eyes and experiment with this sort of movement. Well, keep your eyes open so you can see what I'm doing first and come back and do it. If it's not uh, registering with you, go back and do the first drill till you become um, aware of your ears and their input. Now there's a motorcycle going, motorcycle going by right now. Extra, extra noise to orient by. And also, if that uh, sound is uh, occurring to me and my eyes are closed, I turn my head. My inner ears already are telling me that my head, my head is turning. But if my inner ears are not working at all, I still notice a change in the ambient sounds as my head turns, because they're usually coming from one direction or another. Um, another way to do this is change your hands. Move the distances, close slowly. Uh, if you have a partner who can help you, have them stand behind you, close your eyes, and ask them to put one hand here or one hand here and see if you can notice a difference. Uh, it takes uh, a quite a bit of practice and attention, but uh, after a while, it's not really that hard to perceive. At this distance, when you work two out here, uh, it becomes a little bit difficult. Um, there's actually documentation from the 18th century, as far back as that, where they're noticing that blind people were able to find their way around uh, using what they called uh, facial vision, or there are a lot of uh, misguided theories about what they were doing, and there's no documentation, there's no blind person from that period saying, here's how I did this, uh, but it's, it's apparent well, the only sense that's really capable of providing that much of information is the ears. So they were 
tuning into the reflection of sounds around them. This is uh, what they call in uh, uh, sonar in the military and in fish finding and so on. Um, you have active sonar where you actually send out a ping and listen for it to return. And there's also passive sonar where, say, a submarine listens for the sounds of boats, ships around them, listens for their pings, listens for different kinds of reflections in the water, um, and uh, I believe this can be learned by people as well. Now there's a drill that I'm familiar with that I learned from some other school. It was primarily for um, practicing stealth and ideally requires six individuals. Um, the individuals go out in the field someplace, a meadow or a field, far from uh, distractions, preferably at night. And they, they form this circle with one person in, in the middle. So they all sit down on the ground, and the guy in the middle closes his eyes. And each of the guys on the outside take turns. Oh, by the way, the, uh, the diameter of this is this circle is, say, 30 feet or so. So these guys take turns stalking the guy in the middle, walking very quietly, and they try to touch him with their hand on his shoulder. And uh, that's the objective. Now, if one approaches him and he hears them before he gets touched on the shoulder, he points in that direction. And if he was right, these guys will switch direct, switch uh, positions. Now, this is primarily a, a drill for stealth. You can use it too. But it's also a, a, a drill for developing awareness. You're listening not only to the steps of this person, what they're making, that's at a junior level. At a certain point, this person's not going to make any noise at all. Uh, at a certain point, you're going to have to listen to their uh, vibrations, sound pressure, how this, the ambient noise that reflects off their body goes from this to this And you hear that and you say, that person is close enough, I'll point him out. Right? So a final drill that I want to share with you that's kind of fun and almost takes the form of a uh, fantasy role play which I think is appropriate here, of course. Um, you all have homes, whether it's a cave somewhere, or your house, or an apartment, or your mother's basement, whatever. Um, you know it intimately, so it's going to be a safe place to take, uh, do an experiment. Um, pretend there's been a blackout. All the lights are out. You don't know where the flashlight's at. Your, your, light, your lights are out. You've been woken out of bed and you've heard a strange, suspicious sound on the other side of the building. And you go to, you've got to get out and move through the darkness and investigate with stealth and alertness. Um, so now the reason behind this is that if, even if, our own, if we're in our own homes, uh, we have a tendency to turn the lights on, turn the lights off, even though we know exactly what's there. Um, by moving through here, and incidentally you might have your favorite weapon in hand if it feels appropriate. The point is you'll be testing your ability to see in the darkness, however dark that happens to be, and also testing your ability to use your hearing supplementally to help you determine uh, your environment. Um, it's an interesting little drill and best done when you're in a place where you can uh, feel a little more at home, right? So once again, I'd like to thank you for joining me. Um, I hope this was interesting and useful or uh, entertaining. Um, and if you liked it, uh, please give me the old thumbs up, uh, YouTube and also my channel, 
uh, Benetrum having those that input. Uh, if you want to see more, stay tuned. Please subscribe. I've got more similar things coming out for us. Um, as I have the time and effort and energy, I can create some more things that uh, may well blow you out of the water. So don't miss it. Again, thanks for joining me. Like a